Hey guys, I look a little bit different today because there is a snowstorm outside. Can you see the wind all blowing? That is a snowstorm and it's really, really cold. I have to be warm as possible. I've got a beanie, one layer, I've got a scarf, I've got this red color jumpsuit sort of a thingy. I've got a shirt, Uniqlo, pants. Inside I've got long johns, legging and also long johns for my uh, upper body. Got my really big oversized coat here. Look like I'm about to investigate a murder. Gonna go for breakfast. No, never in my life have I needed to wear so much clothing in order to just go for breakfast. But here we are. I can't take my camera out in the snowstorm because uh, it's not really weather sealant. So looks like I'm gonna have to switch to my iPhone for the rest of today. Hope I don't freeze. Today, in this first year of our new national park, I applaud the efforts of the local citizens, such as Enos Mills, as well as the actions of the National Congress and the creation of this new national treasure. We are now in possession of another protected area, which hopefully future generations will come to enjoy. We are portraying for you today is the year <clears throat> 1915, and that was a big deal. Uh, that year up here in this area because that is the year that Rocky Mountain National Park was actually created. It was created by an act of Congress in January of 1915 and then the park had its actual dedication ceremony in September of 1915. So just a few years ago was Rocky Mountain National Park's 100th anniversary. Hey guys, uh, hope you can see me. Ah, there we go, much better. So there are a lot of different activities at the YMCA and one of them is called Poetry Night, which I will be joining tonight. It's at the library. This is the library behind me. It's a very cute little library. Full name is the Maud Jellison Library, I believe in dedication to someone named Maud Jellison. And uh, let's go check it out. Poetry Night starts in about half an hour at 6.30. Today is a Monday. Okay, let's check it out. The library has already been decorated for Christmas. It's a very cozy little library. my favorite part of the library none other than this the very very warm and toasty fire beautiful I'm rather early today but better to be early than chill so I will be doing a poem do you guys remember learning about Life's Brief Candle, William Shakespeare, Form 2 English Literature. That's right. Joined by some friends. Hello, friends. <coughs> it is not the cuisine. No. Focus. Focus. Ah, there we go. Ooh. Are you all reading poem or not? in Chinese as a can. Okay. Uh, I 
actually all of us are from Malaysia, all the internationals <laughs> there. Mm. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, what can I say about Malaysia? It's a wonderful country, hot, tropical weather, humid, uh, lots of food. So if you'd like to eat, please come and visit my country. I'm going to be here for four months working as a food service. Um, second day at work, still alive. Uh, <laughs> but it is time. My feet are killing me. Eight hours on the, eight hours on the job. So it's quite, quite a something to learn. Uh, but it's fun. So far, it's been fun. Are you in the cafeteria or dish room? Or uh, I'm department? in the cafeteria. So I'm, I'm learning everything now. So I'm doing a bit of cashier, I'm doing a bit of the food service, doing a bit of line, doing a bit of the washing up and stuff. So. Oh, the dish room? Okay. Yeah, dish room as well. Learning everything, learning the ropes. Um, it's been fun, really fun so far. Uh, I've loved poetry for a long time. Ever since I was a little boy, I used to go for poetry reciting competitions. Wow. Um, there's one poem that is in the, that I think every Malaysian, uh, when we grow up, we learn this one poem in our classes. It's a poem by William Shakespeare. It's called Life's Brief Candle. It comes from his play called uh, Mac Macbeth. Yeah, it comes from Macbeth. Uh, I, could, I couldn't understand a single word in Macbeth except for this little poem. Mm. Because for some reason, the words in this poem are quite straightforward um, compared to what, el what else he writes in Macbeth. And um, all Malaysian students, when we go into school, in high school, at the age of about 13 or 14, we all learn this one poem. All of us have to memorize it because it's part of our examination. We have to present this poem. And since the age of 13, I'm 26 this year, for 13 years, I've never forgotten this poem. And so I'd like to present it to all of you. The poem is entitled, Life's Brief Candle. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day till the last syllable of recorded time and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the <laughs> stage and then is heard no more. It is like a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Thank you. <laughs> Has it changed the meaning to you through the years? Um, no, I think the meaning has always been the same. That uh, life can sometimes seem a little bit meaningless. And uh, life's very brief, like a candle, just knocks out like that. And I think that part of Macbeth is just talking about the frustrations about life's brief candle, like, out, out, get out, of, you know, all of that. Um, but yet, the fact that life is brief makes it all the more beautiful to me. Uh, the transcendence. Yes. Yeah. Well, didn't Elton John write us steal that from the wind? Did he? Wind. Oh, candle, candle in the, the wind? wind? Oh, you might have. You might have. Candle yeah. in the wind. Okay. What was his tribute to um, Princess Diana? Princess, Princess, Princess Diana. Did all you girls, Princess Diana. Did you recite that, all you girls? Have that from memory too? You all learn his name, Form 2? No. Yes, we did. Um, I'm older than all of you, so maybe. Yeah, 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 maybe I'm a bit older than them. Did anyone have to memorize Shakespeare? I memorized in ninth grade, mm. and I didn't know what it meant, but I memorized it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and through the years, I just like you. Yeah. And it's becoming deeper and deeper and deeper now. Yeah. That's yeah. The season I was probably that. 14 years old now, so I'd make it about 15 years ago. Yeah. 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 Probably the same. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> The magic of Shakespeare that you can read it multiple times and over the years it just grows on you. Yeah. So sorry I blew out the candle, I had to be a bit dramatic. No, that's fine. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> no, that's not that was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Any Thank questions you. or comments on that? Yeah. That thought about um, life being short, making it more precious. Mm. Emily Dickinson said something like that too. Was she it? Oh. A poet, she said, that it will never come again is what makes life so mm. sweet. Yeah. Somebody once said that if the stars only came out once in a thousand years, they'd be the wonder of the universe. Mm. Mm -hmm. In other words, we're taking it for granted, maybe. They yeah, because the nightly, the nightly, nightly yeah. firework show. Mm. Mm -hmm. I was just staring at the sky last night, freezing in the wind, just <laughs> appreciating nature, because I don't get that in where I stay in, in, in Malaysia, surrounded by skyscrapers and lights and all that. Mm. But here you can appreciate. So, what made you, you wanted to experience something different, the mountains then? Um, well, I chose the YMCA because they give free food and accommodation, so. so <laughs> but, as a wonderful benefit, I get to appreciate the mountains of Colorado and, yeah, the, and the snow, stars. which we don't get snow in my country, and the beautiful stars. Do you have wind and in Malaysia? 
come again? Do you have wind? Oh, we have lots of wind, but it's a tropical <laughs> storm kind of wind. Yeah, yeah that yeah. kind of wind. Yeah. And uh, poetry night, which we don't get in Malaysia very often. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ross. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Necklaces sometimes, or angels sometimes, they can get really big, like giant ones. Is it supposed to be like the nativity scene? It could be all, the nativity scene could be on there. This is just some beer. Oh, dear. And um, mm. Santa Claus. What's going to be cool is the, the designs that will play on the ceiling will turn out the lights. Mm. Oh. And we'll um, lift that. You know what's going to happen when the heat goes up and hits the blade. Like the candles, right? yeah, yeah. It's going to be kind of oh, this will cool. obvious. Or you can just go... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine a family of Germans all going, blue, blue. Yeah. <laughs> Pusten, Pusten, Pusten. <laughs> See if you can make you and let's turn out the lamps here, because the, the darker it is, the oh. better for the design on the ceiling. And it's very peaceful, because it's gonna be, there's going to be lots of motion mm. and light activity, but it's going to be dead quiet. And it's just mm. a, kind of a peaceful thing. It'd be good for meditation, but I'm going to perhaps hopefully not ruin it with um, a traditional... Christmas poem that we all know, written by a father on his way home from work. I think he was late for the festivities of uh -oh. Christmas Eve. So he wrote them a poem. He wrote his children a poem on that night before Christmas. Mm. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama, in her kerchief, and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When, out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew in a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With the little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. Candles going is quite bright. And uh, this smell will be in the house every day throughout the holiday seasons. They exchange their gifts also on Christmas Eve is what happens. Sitting around the tree with the candles slowly burning out and you know, eating snacks and looking at your presents and as they burn out on the tree one by one, you can start playing a game guessing which one's going to go out next. It's going to be the one on the top of them. It's going to be next. They kind of pop out. It's one by one. It gets all dark. The little kids are asleep.